Hello everybody, this is Ezra St. White. Good evening, good morning, and good night, wherever you are. Tonight we are going to continue with our reading from Go Free, A Guide to Aligning with the Archetype of Western Kind, by Jason Cohn. Last reading we left off on page 30, and we will continue on to page 31. Meme Pathogen Infection, Anti-Whiteism and the Anti-White Narrative Anti-Whiteism is all concepts, ideologies, actions, and everything derived therefrom, such as opinions, policies, laws, rules, that inflict injury on Western kind and Western civilization. Anti-Whites use carefully crafted pretexts to justify anti-whitism. These pretexts are classified as MIS, MIS. The moralization, intellectualization, and sentimentalization of the anti-white desire to inflict harm on Western kind. Note, while all MPs are pretexts to arrive at anti-white conclusions, not all MIS pretexts or MPs. Examples. All races are inherently equal, interchangeable. Thus, non-white lack of achievement is due to the evil and selfishness of white people. Thus, all immigrants are the same. Thus, non-white children deserve white charity because their suffering is caused by whites either because white people created the situations or failed to correct the situations that caused their suffering. Whites owe non-whites entry into their countries because it accords with our moral obligation to do unto others as we would have done unto ourselves. There is no race but quote on human race. Non-white racial quotas quote on white privilege, college courses, corporate diversity training programs. As anti-whites and anti-white doctrines predominate the news and entertainment media, governments, universities, and church leadership, the anti-white narrative is the official narrative of Western civilization. The anti-white narrative is fiction and is debunked by lived experience and unfiltered statistics. In addition to MPs and other tools of persuasion, anti-whites enforce the narrative by stigmatizing, pathologizing, and criminalizing everyone and everything that deviates from the anti-white narrative. Anti-whites derive this narrative from anti-whiteism and the application of anti-white lenses to historically, contemporarily, and forecasted events. Anti-white lenses are derived from the mis pretexts and MPs. Anti-whites use mis pretexts, MPs, anti-whiteism, interpretive mandates, and anti-white lenses to circular reasoning to provide their arguments. As such lenses are rooted in a deeply concealed jealousy and envy of Western kind, they often conflict superficially. As a result, anti-whites appear to be internally conflicted and are often labeled hypocrites. For example, anti-whites often attack wealth, quote on, Wealth is denied to anti-whites and used as a tool to suppress exploit non-whites. However, they celebrate wealthy anti-whites and the use of that wealth to suppress and exploit Westmen. Externally, anti-whites appear hypocritical, but they are not internally conflicted and thus they are able to behave with a certainty of a religious zealot. In both cases, the condemnation of wealth and the celebration of wealth 
the true unspoken objective of harming Western kind is served. Seeing anti-white quote on hypocrisy is the first step, but the goal is to see that there is no hypocrisy. Seeing is believing, anti-whiteism throughout society. In the following segments, you are introduced to MP identification and classification. The ability, crucially, to going free. You cannot cure yourself of an ailment if you do not identify and classify the ailment. Anti-whiteism is everywhere in Western civilization. Unfortunately, its prevalence can make it difficult for Westmen to identify. Much like deep sea fishing, submerged in the vastness of the ocean are unable to fathom a world beyond the water. Westmen submerged in anti-whiteism can find it difficult to perceive the anti-white narrative as something artificial, fictional, and harmful. However, with any skill, with time and patience, you will improve your ability to identify and go free of MPs. And the more MPs you are able to identify, the more adept you become to identifying them. You will soon realize that you are no less submerged in anti-white poison than deep sea fish are submerged in the vastness of the ocean. Anti-whiteism in commercials. We begin with commercials. These snapshots from our environment are loaded with anti-whiteism. At first, they may seem like coincidences, but advertising decisions are never left to chance. The races of the actors, who is paired with whom, who is portrayed in a bad or good light, the music that is used for superiority or inferiority, are, con are conscious de decisions that increasingly over the past few decades prioritize anti-whiteism over profit. Keep in mind that anti-whites will dismiss individual examples of commercials as chance, but they cannot dismiss a holistic assessment of advertising across the West. A toothpaste commercial with a beautiful white woman arm in arm with a non-white man. They are both laughing and smiling euphorically. What message does such imagery convey? If the goal were simply to encourage the viewer to buy toothpaste, any happy couple would do. What is the purpose of the interracial couple? A statistically minuscule percentage of couples? The commercial speaks to white women. It suggests that you are a beautiful if you brush your teeth with the product in the commercial, but it also suggests that choosing a non-white man results in picture-perfect love. A car commercial compares two car buying experiences. One commercial shows a dumb white couple, ungroomed and badly dressed, buying an overpriced lemon from a sleazy car dealer. The other portrays a smart, stylish dressed, non-white couple making the quote on right choice and buying a fair priced, superior automobile. What MPs does this scenario convey? Non-white people are smart, they groom themselves, dress well, and they make intelligent decisions. White couples, by contrast, are out-of-shape slobs who are easily cheated. A commercial for cereal opens in a beautiful kitchen. You will find a family happily enjoying breakfast. The carefully engineered lighting creates a warm, homey scene. The non-white husband and his white wife are proud of the intelligent questions their precious biracial child is asking over morning cereal. What MPs does this commercial impart? White women prefer non-white men. White men, therefore, are inferior. White and non-white couples produce children who are just as clever as white children, probably more so. Interracial relationships create happy homes, strong marriages, 
and harmonious families. A home security agency depicts white men breaking into a home. The non-white homeowner or single white mother calls the alarm company. A competent non-white switchboard operator reassures her and a non-white police officer arrives to save the day. What are the MPs? White men are criminals. Non-whites are victims of white men. Non-whites are the good guys. White men should look to non-white men for protection from white men. An insurance commercial uses human characteristics to pitch its protection. The heroic insurance company is personified as a non-white man. The non-white man protects you from mayhem, which is personified by a white man. What are the MPs in this commercial? Mayhem, misfortune, and disaster are associated with Western kind in general and white men specifically. On the other hand, Protection, dependability, and assistance are associated with non-whites in general and non-white men specifically. A radio commercial uses a white man affecting a goofy voice to represent an inferior product sold on an expensive price. He is contrasted by a soothing, deep voice of a non-white man offering a superior product at a fair price. What MPs does this radio commercial impart? White men are goofy and dishonest. Non-white men, like a product represented by a non-white actor, are superior. A clothing advertisement in a newspaper or magazine. Two stylish couple, couples strut down the street for a fabulous night out in the town. There are four actors. Two are white and two non-white. Both couples are interracial. What MPs does this advertisement send? Whites should date non-whites to have fun and be modern stylish. Stylish and quote on acceptable whites prefer to date non-whites. White men are inferior to non-white men and white women are inferior to non-white women. Attractive and successful whites choose non-white mates. What are some of the MPs in the previous examples? White men are criminals. White men are stupid and naive. White men are shysters. Successful white women prefer non-white men. Successful white men prefer non-white women. It is more fun and stylish to be work with non-whites. White men should look to non-white men for protection. Interracial families are successful, happy, and harmonious. Anti-whiteism and entertainment. The entertainment media, popular fiction, stage screen, screen and television abound with MPs. Heroes and Villains Villains are nearly always Westmen. If there are non-white villains, they have a sympathetic backstory, are forced by circumstances caused by Westmen into a life of crime, and or they are working for the true villain who is a Westman. The heroes crucial to the triumph of good over the white villain are played by a multiracial cast. We learn that whites are inherently villainous and non-whites are inherently virtuous. Whites can only be good when siding with non-whites against other whites. Westmen need non-white support to make them whole, valuable, and correct. Leaders and geniuses. Non-whites are cast in the roles of intellectually superior characters. The genius, scientist, professor, judge, president, 
even God. White actors are cast as the intellectually inferior characters who are amazed by the insights, brilliance, and leadership of the non-whites. Westmen should look to non-whites for solutions. In fact, non-whites are so perfectly competent that white disagreement is likely driven by prejudice rather than objective analysis. Westmen are submissive and surrender authority to non-whites because non-whites have the answers and know how to lead. The effects of this MP are easily seen in the real world of sociopolitical advocacy. Most whites are uncomfortable endorsing or participating in causes that lack non-white support and participation. They feel and argue to include non-whites. This is because they know, subconsciously or consciously, that their opinions are suspect without significant non-white agreement. Such beliefs are engendered by this and other MPs. At a subconscious level, they feel that whites working toward a goal without non-white participation is somehow wrong. They are relieved of a non-white express if a non-white expresses agreement and often clamor for such non-whites to assume high profile roles. What do they call the black man at the conservative gathering? the keynote speaker. Women and men, they should seek. MPs show non-white men and intellectually superior leaders as heroes encourage white women to see non-white men as superior mates. There are numerous MPs that are designed specifically to argue white men to favor non-white men over their own men. Entertainment depicts white men as intrinsically awkward, clumsy, and unpolished. On the other hand, non-white men are portrayed as naturally suave, hip, and stylish. White men may be able to learn to be cool or hip, but only by mimicking non-whites and non-Western behaviors. White women are depicted as impressed by non-white males vying for their attention. There is a particularly insidious collection of MPs directed at white women and intended to influence them to seek non-white mates. These MPs cause white women to fear white men and see non-white men as protectors of women and children. Think about how many movies are about white, clean-cut, and educated men who are secretly ruthless abusers or serial killers of women. By contrast, how many movies have you seen where non-white men despise their apparent thuggishness, are actually kind, sympathetic, considerate, and natural protectors of women and children? The clean-cut, intelligent Westmen is a benign facade for a monster lurking underneath. The thuggish non-white man is a rough exterior for a mistrusted heart of gold. These MPs infect white women with the notion that exterior signals are untrustworthy and are likely to run contrary to a person's real identity. A white woman's white neighbor may be well-spoken and have a history of good deeds, but he is potentially a predator. By contrast, her non-white neighbor may have a record of violence, crime, and misdeeds, but he is likely a good person. Dead White Souls and Non-White Spirituality Entertainment consistently shows non-whites as in touch with God and more attuned to mystical nature than Westmen. Westmen are soulless materialists, served from a vast of unseen supernatural knowledge and power. Non-whites have a special ability, absent in whites, that enables them to access the supernatural reservoir of knowledge and power. 
non-whites are far closer to the divine than is possible for West men. White genocidal maniacs and non-white good Samaritans. West men persecute, trick, and exploit others, especially non-whites. Non-whites live in harmony with all peoples, whereas Westmans have been uniquely harmful towards other races. Non-whites help and never harm outsiders. When the entertainment script shows peoples in conflict, non-whites are depicted as noble self-defenders. Western kind is always depicted as e-noble, genocidal maniacs. In fact, any concern for white well-being is, by definition, wicked. Consequently, all whites are concerned with the well-being of Western, of Western kind are villains. Related to the MPs that reinforce concern for white well-being as being immoral to evil are the MPs that go deeper. The MPs that teach Westmen that opposing white well-being is noble and praiseworthy. Whites are good if they fight against their own kind. To be anti-white is to fight immorally and evil. All right, we're going to stop it there. We ended on page 46. And this is Ezra St. White. And I'm reading from the book, Go Free, A Guide to Aligning with the Archetype of Western Kind by Jason Cohn. And I want to thank you guys again for staying with me on this reading. And I hope you enjoyed it. And everybody, be good to your family and be good to children. Have a good night.